Okay, we're uh, uh, from Dust to Gas. This is a Leap 2 Technologies for Lunar Site Development at the Marius Hill Skylight. And what we are is a consortium of companies, an international consortium, that uh, is working on specific technologies for how do you develop uh, the site for long-term human settlement. We're looking specifically at these types of features that are found on most of the planets. Uh, Mars has them, Moon has them, and Earth has them. This is an example of the size of the, uh, of the caverns. That, uh, this is the largest one on Earth, which is about the size we think that we'll find on the Moon at, on an average level. So this Marius Hills is, uh, is, is our case study. The Marius Hills skylight is what we look for when we do, the, uh, when we, when we do a specific site development program. Uh, however, because it's a prototype, these technologies that we're developing are applicable to any, any one of these types of features at any other uh, location because the is issue is of access and, uh, and usabil usability of the, of, the present, of, the, uh, of the whole. So, let me get out of here. So our companies uh, come from, from Italy, from Korea, from Australia, uh, universities uh, in the United States and the only university in Korea and also commercial companies as well. And we all work together on various technology development to figure out how do you use this particular site for eventual uh, mining operations, for example, uh, or uh, uh, landing pad uh, and delivery services as well, and just the overall general layout of, a, of this particular site for the eventuality of long-term stay and habitability. Uh, some of those issues that we have to deal with is the uh, ability to get into the cave, down into the pit, and also how do you, how do you access it uh, robotically. We have just recently constructed a, uh, a mock-up of the, of the pit and it's a sandbox using simulated lunar terrain that we, that we source locally and uh, use that to help us with our traction studies and ability to, uh, to do robotics. The way we approach the technology development is through phased approaches. Each one of these phases has a very specific technology or technologies that can be, can be developed uh, for the, the appropriate timeline that they would be uh, coming, on, coming on, on board. For example, remote sensing would be the first phase, then you go into robotic uh, reconnaissance of the, of the cave, then eventually you get to the human, human exploration part of the, of, the, uh, of the cave, then the longer term stays, and then eventually by mid-century we think you'll start looking at the cave for for infrastructure development, clearing it out for longer term stay, and then by the end of the decade, possibly covering the cave hole so you have a more volume and then and you have to pressurize it so you have to get out of the cans, get out of the spacesuits so you have more volume to live in. Uh, part of that um, involves, this uh, video here would, when you have, uh, it will show a overview of that whole concept. I want to show it now. So, uh, additional technologies. So one of the missions we're developing, an actual lunar mission, is to do dust measurements. Uh, we are devising a quartz crystal microbalance for measuring dust on the, at the surface to establish the accumulation rates of dust on solar panels, for example, or, or on, the, uh, on the robotics, uh, so that we can design an appropriate uh, countermeasures to that. This, uh, this, this uh, instrument is uh, proposed for a lunar, uh, commercial lunar lander. This just gives you an example of what kind of issues we have. This is the breadboard of the instrument. You can see here very quickly, uh, as we put it in the vacuum, it starts boiling away and, and, and very quickly saturates the instrument sensor. So it was kind of a lesson learned for us to, uh, in terms of how we designed the cover for being able to do this application. Uh, we also have been looking at investments. and we, This is the largest vacuum chamber in the world. For, that has, it's called a dirty vacuum chamber that we could actually put the complete spacecraft in with our instrument. And this is in our Korean partner doing this, this investment. We're looking at, uh, at lunar soil uh, simulant and harden it into, a, into a, uh, a, a, a 3D printed material for construction purposes. Another technology we're developing here, we're investigating volatiles in, this, in, the, uh, in, the, in the lunar regolith and also radiation testing tests. Uh, we're looking at porosity tests when you start thinking about covering the dome, uh, is, the, is the soil going to be able to hold the gas inside the, uh, inside the, the, the pit 
or does it seep through the cave walls or whatnot? Those are tests we're doing and investigating. So the, the architecture part of this, space architecture, uh, we have a team that's looking at the actual habitation pieces of this. Uh, when we start looking about habitation, there'll probably be as much surface activity on the surface as there will down in the cave as well. And you need to have your first surface elements, which would be habitation modules. Again, this goes back to the uh, 3D printing processes and uh, how, do you, how do you produce that and how do you outfit these habitats. This was an example of a habitat we designed for NASA's, Mars, NASA's uh, 3D printed Mars Habitat competition. Uh, they call it our Hexab design. And uh, we did a complete uh, assessment, 100% uh, design of, of the outfitting phase and the construction timeline that it would take, uh, that it would take to get there from, uh, from, from the printing of it to the, uh, to the outfitting part of it. I won't, won't have time to show you the video, but the video will be, uh, give you a complete timeline of that, of that process. We also look at uh, how do you, once you get into the cave part of it, how do you put inflatables down there, expand it uh, with, for secondary structures, so that you, uh, these, are, these are some technology test beds we're, we're developing here for an inflatable uh, floor system that would expand as the module expands and you can deploy your floor system and all the other utility systems. This is just another example of some uh, uh, studies we did on interior ergonomics for how do you put four people into a, into a cramped space and will they be able to live that long you know, for a year or so without uh, any uh, uh, human factors issues. So now with all that, all that technology we're developing here, we have a, a STEM program. And that STEM program takes all these technologies and uses it as a framework for teaching uh, our, our middle and high school students about space exploration. They go through the remote sensing phase, and they go through the reconnaissance phase, and the habitation phase, and we take them into caves in the area. They, take, they design their instruments, they design their, their, their protocols, and then when they go into the cave, they'll, they'll do, learning, uh, they, they do learning about field measurements and uh, testing out their instruments. Uh, we also have, they're part of that uh, lunar dust instrument uh, mission payload. That's going to be a student payload to the moon program. Uh, and they also do high altitude balloons. That, uh, that will, uh, as part of their capstone project, they actually launch a balloon and put instruments on top of that. And that will uh, give them the ability to learn about, uh, about again, uh, flight hardware and whatnot. Um, that is really about the whole sense of it. This is probably just going to shoot off a rocket here. Uh, it, there's no time to, there's a video here, but uh, we'll see that, how that works out. Uh, so, with that, this is just, this is just a, uh, the kind of the scenario of how the thing would build up from beginning to end. Thank you very much.